The 569th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog was offering plenty of markets for this week's PGA Championship that you couldn't find anywhere else, and they've got you covered for all kinds of events in the future. Sign up with promo code MMASGPN to claim your special pick and first-time deposit offer of up to $250 of bonus cash. That's underdogfantasy.com, promo code MMASGPN. We're also brought to you by the Mega Memorial Day Merch Sale. 15% off everything in the SGPN Merch Store. Use promo code SGPN MAY. Heidi Ho DeGenerino is welcome to episode 569. Nice of the MMA Gambling Podcast, the Sports <laughs> Gambling Podcast Network. Seppel's going out to Vanessa Demopoulos. Little Monster was a big dog for us last night, and she came through cash and tickets and all that stuff that we like to say. So, what we shall talk about that soon. I am one of your hosts. Uh, I go by Shockwave Jeff Fox. Thank you for coming to the show. Um, my co host is laughing already. It's gonna be a good episode. I'm at uh, for people on YouTube. I'm north, north, north or the north. Uh, the northern studios have moved even more north. So it may be a little echoey, but hey, people say I look more confident when you see more of my body. So maybe I'll, I'll look more confident, <laughs> even though I'm not making, That's, not making picks today. I think that was only when you were like leaning back. Like, oh, I can do that. This is a swivel yeah. chair. No, you no leaning worries. back. You had your like arms crossed once or twice. And people <laughs> were like, that dude knows his stuff. Yeah. Well, I can't even remember if you were good that week. <laughs> you can't argue with my results. Again, uh, last night was a very good night for us and our acolytes, our followers. Um, it was the best of nights for me because uh, I hit a ton of plays, a ton of dogs, won a ton of money, and I beat Gumby. But it was also good because Gumby did good as well. So it was it was win-win for everyone. I came out on top, but Gumby still did good. So you all can still worship Gumby man, just wait, wait till tomorrow. We, we uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll we're gonna, we're gonna we'll... talk about some regional MMA action. Uh, yes, it is as good as it's been. <laughs> that voice you hear is Daniel Gumby Vreeland, my faithful co-host, and we are going to break down last night's UFC fight night. Barboza versus Murphy didn't end up like the last few last couple of fights kind of uh, ate away at our profits, but overall it was a good night. Um, yeah. It, Save for a um, super low fight IQ, uh, multiple headbutts. Uh, I had a unbeaten streak going right up to the the co-main event. So um, we won't spend too much time because it wasn't like this was a big consequential card. I, I say that and people are looking at their uh, podcast players and it's like, there's an hour left though. What's he talking about? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. They talk, Maybe they talk for 45 minutes yeah. uh, about this. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, um, Barboza versus Murphy, as I said, uh, it went down in the UFC Apex uh, last night. I don't, I didn't see uh, the guy that lives there in the crowd at all. Was he in the crowd? I think he's training to get beat, although now he doesn't have an opponent. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we're talking about former champion Jamal Hill. Yeah, he lives in the Apex. Uh, yeah. m- maybe, I, 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 yeah, I don't know where he went. Maybe they, he was trying out. <laughs> the shanghai uh residents since they had fights there he, he went on a it's vacation true. to his second his second home um yep. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah no i have, don't know why he wasn't there yeah shanghai will be tomorrow's episode don't worry you gotta i'm gonna start talking about it now because uh, <laughs> I, I broke down 25 fights this yep. week uh and three of them dropped off which you know regional yep. mma get a regional mma uh and i missed two uh so well, there, there you go I'm going to so brag about 20, it now. 20 and 22. 20 and 2. 20 and 2. Yeah, 20 out of 22, yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. You hear that? Every, it's, uh, we're getting tons of praises, of course, in the YouTube because people follow Gumby's picks. But today is UFC, and it's all about me because I went 9 and 3. Gumby went 8 and 4, so he did good as well. Um, main event. We got this wrong. Uh, this was a step up for Lerone Murphy. Um his first real legit opponent. And he made him look like an old man. Uh, he battered and bruised Edson Barboza uh, with, it was strictly boxing performance by him. Barboza didn't get the kicks going. Like I would have hoped and expected him to do. And you know, it was too late for that. Cause he was he got his face caved in by Lorraine Murphy's sharp boxing 49, 46, 50, 45, 50, 45 across the board. I want to know how this one fight of the night, how I, I don't get, they always do this. It's a terrible side of fights. Yeah. 
It was it was a uh, one man got beat up for 25 minutes. So they feel bad for Edson Barbosa. They wanted to give him extra money, but like it was one sided fight. Yeah, I, it, and there were other really good fights on the card too. You know, not for anything. Uh, you know, like if you want to go back and and pick some out, I. No, actually, now I'm looking at it. Were there any other good? <laughs> I don't know. Highly all tongue versus Clayton Rodriguez, maybe. That was all right. Yeah, but Vanessa. But Vanessa Demopoulos versus Ducati wasn't yep. bad. Um, we got we got knocked on uh, how we pronounce Ducati's name too. No, yeah, that's true. Wookie. I didn't think she did pronounce it like a like a French woman, but she does apparently. We so. we literally okay. have never gotten her name right. We we've been saying <laughs> it for years. We've literally never gotten it right. So I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna doubt people. They're they're yes. right at whatever they said. Um, yes. I'm looking right now with the the fights, man, and. Maybe that was fight of the night. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, was this night that bad? Like, yeah. I, 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 really quick because I'm off on vacation. But yeah, um, I, I did watch everything. But yeah, it, they often don't give out okay. fight of the night. Given a bonus to all the, all the uh, submission uh, submission and TKO winners. But whatever. Who cares? It's not our yeah, money. I, I, would probably, I would probably say if they had to give out a fight of the night, it should have been Barboza and Murphy. I'm just going right. to say they probably could have given two more finish bonuses and just yeah. called it a night. Yeah. So Murphy on the, on the way up, I, you have to say after this, right? I'd have to say so. You know, I, I kind of called him on the, the Gabriel Santos fight and said, I didn't believe in him. And I, I, I mean, was there anything about this promote performance that really made you say like, Whoa, their own Murphy. It, he just kind of like, he was uh, he just looked a, like that. he looked great. He steamrolled. Him. I mean, he was he was a step ahead of Edson Barboza, but like I, I don't know, maybe maybe this is just me being a hater, but it just seemed like Edson Barboza was a step behind the whole time. And yeah, it, it could have been nothing. Both. Like Lerone never had him in trouble. Like yeah, was was he ever in trouble? Mm, probably not. No, no. So like I, I don't we're think talking so, about no. a guy who just met who spent 25 minutes in a dominant decision and didn't once put his opponent in trouble. And maybe that's just yeah. why I'm, I'm sitting here being like, I, I still don't know about Laroni. Yeah. So who do you think he's going to fight next? And what do you think is going to happen? Is he going to win? Uh, let me, let me take a dab with the UFC rankings. Cause he right wasn't now. even ranked before uh, this. So he's probably going to be what low, like the, in the teens, probably more than likely. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, Edson Barboza was 12 going into this fight. Yeah. So you got to imagine he's probably going to take that spot. Here's the problem I have with that, though. If he takes that spot, do, are you here telling me Laroni Murphy's better than Diego Lopes? Yeah, he, I, I don't get this. Oh, he takes the spot. That's that's not really how it works. It's based on your resume. It's not based but, on your But a lot, thing, of, right? a lot of the other rankers have been doing Oh, that. I know that. I know that. Yeah, I, 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 I don't I don't, I don't, I don't agree. That, so. I'm, I'm not yeah. one of those guys, but I, I don't agree. Because yeah. for me, Diego Lopes, I think I have it number 10 or number nine or something like that. And he's yeah. still 14 inexplicably. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, he's going to be in the teens somewhere. Uh, I think Danny Gay just took a fight. So not Danny Gay. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember against who, but, but somebody, uh, maybe Bryce Mitchell. I mean, somebody sure. of that kin, right? Bryce Mitchell, yeah. uh, Danny Gay. I feel like he's probably not up to the Calvin Cater level, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he beat somebody higher than Ige and Diego Lopes, but I, I mean, I, I wouldn't pick him to beat Diego Lopes. No. Um, or I, Diego I, Lopez. No, I'm going to Lopes him. Um, <laughs> go, go Lopes him. Uh, mm. There's your episode title. Go Lopes him. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would, I, I'm, I don't know what I think of Laroni Murphy still. I, yeah. Yeah. Best anyway. performance he's had though. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. I, I yeah. mean, he looked good. I just at no point in time was I was like this skill set or this thing is a problem. It, it was like it's good. Yes, it's good. It's true. You know what else is good? Another podcast that we have on our network, the NASCAR Gambling Podcast, and it's the biggest week in racing: the Indy 500, Monaco Grand Prix, and the Coke 600 all going down. Rod and Cody from the NASCAR Gambling Podcast and the F1 Gambling Podcast have you covered. Make sure to join their Kyle Larson diecast car giveaway. That's free to enter. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash race to register and make sure to subscribe to the NASCAR Gambling Podcast and the F1 Gambling Podcast. Plus, we're running a mega Memorial Day merch sale at 50% off everything in the merch store. Promo code SGPN May. When's Memorial Day weekend for you? This weekend or next weekend? 
Uh next next uh Sun or next Monday. Okay, cool. So get gear like I'm wearing now. Well, I'm wearing gear, and so is Gumby. There you go. So get any of that from our store. Look cool, like us. So cool. Um, co-made event we got wrong as well, but this is something we could have seen. We could have yeah. foreseen happening. If Carlson if Carlson was gonna lose, he was gonna get caught with a uh um. A, a shot to his face, <laughs> to his eye. And that's what happened. Uh, Chaos Williams, knockout punch, a minute 30 into the round against Carlson Harris. If you stick on the feet long enough against, um, even a minute and a half is too long against uh, Williams, you're going to, good chance you're going to get knocked out. And that's what happened. So we missed our uh, plus 115 pick there. Yeah, I want to say I'm surprised he didn't shoot a takedown, but then also mm-hmm. it's Carlston Harris, and I'm not surprised at all he didn't shoot a takedown. <laughs> um, also, it's MMA, and that's basically what happens in MMA. Yeah, and in and, and, and maybe it's great to see this Chaos Williams uh, because you know he was away for a year, but he is damn exciting, right? Like, mm-hmm. say what you will about whether or not you believe he's a future top fifteen guy or top ten guy or whatever. Like, maybe I believe that, maybe I don't. But, like, at the end of the day, he's a lot of fun to watch, and he's a hell of a personality. So, like, yeah, give me give me more Chaos Williams. I'm, I'm excited exactly. for it. I think he's probably in the uh, Nico Price realm of where I – anytime somebody I'm like, is they're not top 15 yet, give them Nico Price. Uh, yep. He's he's in that – has he fought Nico Price already? It feels like he's uh, already, right? I don't think so. I don't remember it, but I don't remember much. He's in, uh, but anyway, no, he's in the, he is not. He's in, Alex Morono, which basically Alex Morono basically reminds me of Nico Price. But anyway, Nico Price, ahead. Alex Morono, Max Griffin. <laughs> yeah, that he's in that kin right now, and, and yeah. like, give him one of them, I guess. Give us more chaos, all right? Yeah. We, we want more chaos in our life for sure. Um, all right, we hit this one. Oh, I hit not we. Excuse me, I hit this one. That this was the, our only difference of the evening. The Thumbo Greenbo. Uh, unanimous decision over Ramiz Brahamaj 30 27 across the board. It wasn't that spectacular of a fight, but I got green at minus 134. Yeah, and my breakdown was right on. I said, uh, when Ramiz can get somebody down, he wins, and when he can, he mm-hmm. loses. Thought he could, he could. Uh, Themba's, Themba's wrestling work clearly played up. Um, I wonder because you know, I cited his takedowns that he gave up to Takashi Sato. Mm -hmm. um as like a reason why i didn't trust him i wonder if it's just that he went into that fight not expecting takashi sato to ever shoot a takedown because who would expect it to happen and in this one he probably drilled takedown defenses for two months in a row before he he fought ramiz like he he sort of strikes me as the kind of guy who like when he has the right game plan is like drilled the right thing over and over again he's quite good at it um and like things can catch him off guard, uh, and just Ramiz did nothing to catch him off guard here. Yeah, amazing. If you practice suppling, you get better. get better at it. A lot of fighters don't seem to to know that yet. So uh, this next one, we predicted it. Even though we predicted it would be a knockout. Adrian Yanez, Yanez TKO punches a lot of punches over <laughs> Vinicius Salvador two forty seven into the first round. We had uh, Yanez at minus three at fifty. I know you watch these on either delay or super <laughs> yep. sped up or sometimes on mute. Did you listen to this one by chance? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. Remarkable sound on this punch. <laughs> it, it, and I, yeah. I heavily suggest anybody who didn't listen to the broadcast or miss this fight to just go back and listen to the sound when Adrian Yanez lands a punch and it'll just remind you how easy it is to pick Rami or uh, not Ramiz Adrian when it yeah. gets to a fight with a guy who's going to get hit. Cause man, yeah. does he throw hard? Like how they say a uh, ball comes off people's bats differently. He, he, you can tell in baseball, you can tell different. when someone's in the, uh, in the batting cage. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, he hits differently. Yeah. Um, and he, uh, Salvador was down for quite a while after, was he not too? Yeah. It was kind of scary. Yeah. yeah. He got up. All, all is good. They, I'm sure. They usually get up. <laughs> <laughs> Knock on wood, thus far, they have gotten up. All right, before we move on, let me tell you about Underdog Fantasy. The NBA playoffs are here, and our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy, wants to make it a lot more interesting. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports, especially if you follow our picks, especially if you follow followed Gumby's picks today uh, on sportsgumbypodcast.com. Uh, playing their pick'em game is as simple as selecting higher or lower on player stats like points, rebounds, assists, and so much more. You make entries of all basketball or mix and match across your other favorite sports, you win up to 100 times your money, and it's a ton of fun. Underdog is available in 
30 plus states, including California, Texas, Canada, and they just launched champions their player versus player format in Florida. Pull up underdogfantasy.com, check out their home screen. Uh, they always have uh, daily specials on there. Uh, they have a pick'em special when you actually do uh, new customers, when you do sign up. And if all that's not enough, they also are running a ton of different promos, bonus cash, airdrops, specials, giveaways, and more throughout the NBA playoffs. So make sure to follow at Underdog Picks on Twitter to keep an eye out. Now the important part, sign up with our code MMA SGPN to claim your special pick and first-time deposit offer up to 250 bucks in bonus cash. Underdogfantasy.com, promo code MMA SGPN. All right, uh, we have, yes, this one. Yeah, Angela Hill screwed me over here. I, I didn't hit my double prop, uh, my double fancy play pick, thanks to her. I had Angela Hill via decision. All of a sudden, she's a submission artist. Uh, she was cruising to a, a decision victory, and then she decided she was going to tap out uh, Luana Pinheiro with a guillotine choke, 412 into the second round. She looked great. Uh, sure it, did. I, I keep saying nice things about angela hill she's also like she's really old right I, i'm mm -hmm. not wrong about late that. 30s like, i think we shouldn't want, uh you shouldn't really reveal a lady's age 39 I, yeah she's 39 she's it's half, remarkable she's half she's a doing. decade older than me which is nuts uh because <laughs> correct me she if looks I'm way wrong. better than you though she does she looks she looks a lot better than me correct me if i'm wrong and, and maybe mm -hmm. this is you know uh hindsight being 2020 although i picked her anyway but or you know just uh you know recency bias or something like that does she look way better recently than she did let's say six years ago like oh, yeah. she looks well, yeah for like, sure and and i don't know what the aging curve is in the women's divisions because like they mm -hmm. haven't really been around long enough for us to say oh uh, you know the the prime of a uh straw weight or the prime mm -hmm. of a flyweight in the women's divisions is like we know what that is for a heavyweight the prime is like you know 33 to 38 you know the yeah. prime for a lightweight is you know 28 to 33 i don't know what the prime of a woman's straw weight is but it feels like 39 shouldn't be the answer and no. it seems to be the answer for her Two straight wins and four or five. So yeah, well, she, she got cut from the UFC before, so she definitely looks better than she did. Yeah, and she um, looks yeah, great she even, too. Like she, yep. she's out there putting it on people. Yep, expanding her game. Yeah, she's definitely a top fifteen fighter, and uh, maybe, uh, maybe even top ten if she keeps. I think she's up. probably um, top ten. Yeah, amazing. Um, and yeah, well, I wish she got a decision because I had her be a decision. So <laughs> there goes that was gonna that was gonna be my play every week. I was gonna take a women's fight to go the distance and. They failed me in the second week. Um, all right, so I went three and two. Gumby went two and three over the main card, but the prelims is where we really made made our hay. Um, main event was Tom Nolan using his length after a scare, um, using his length, getting uh, knocked down, and then using his length again to win. TKO needed the body and punches over Victor Martinez, 350 into the first round. It was not easy, though, Gumby. I think he's a fade against anybody who can close distance. Yeah, uh, you know, Martinez he, was not listening to Safe Saud. The rest of yeah, us at and, home were listening, but and he's only five eight, right? Like he's a. Yes. It, it was a big size difference, right? Because like, don't get me wrong, Tom Nolan's gonna have height over everybody in that division, not named Jalen Turner. Six but, three, hundred fifty five pounds. Yeah, yeah, but five eight is a different kind of short, and that's exactly how tall Bogdan Grad was, who he fought on Contender Series. Right, he's a five eight guy too. So, like, I think anytime he fights somebody who can close the distance on him, I think he's going to get hit with an overhand right. I, I, I really do. Like, I, I think he's probably a fade moving forward for that reason. Um, I don't know what his takedown defense looks like because he hasn't really had to use it. And uh, I don't I don't know what his, his offensive wrestling or offensive jiu-jitsu looks like. But I think just anytime he gets into a striking match with somebody who closes the distance, they're going to pop him. No, he did get dropped by a guy, what, five inches shorter than him. So, and he got beat his last yeah. fight by knockout, too, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, uh, safe sound, boy. He was, he was going wild. I love that guy. <laughs> even for himself, he was, even for him, he was going wild. It was great. The F bombs were a fly in, that's for sure. Um, light heavyweights coming in a bit. Omar Sai took care of Tuku Toko submission face crank 343 in the first round. This is a total domination in the grappling around by the newcomer over the other newcomer. Yeah. We just said, as long as he shoots a takedown early, this is his. I mean, he sure did. Really, Didn't waste any time. Not really much more to say than that. Like it was a really <laughs> good grappler with like kind of some questionable striking up against the guy with a pretty good striker with kind of questionable grappling. So you're like, you know, as long as he gets to his realm, he's fine. 
Uh, he got to it early. I, man, I don't, I don't know whether or not I actually trust his, is grappling against like some of the higher level guys, but then again, it's light heavyweight. What are the yep. higher level guys grappling in terms of light heavyweights? <laughs> he's he's close to top fifteen after that victory, is he not? <laughs> I don't. Twenty people in the division, right? I don't. No, the, the light heavyweight yeah, division's got light a ton of people. They got they got fifty to sixty, yeah. and uh, none of them are good. But like that's not the yeah. point. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, we had a first year women's bantamweight <clears throat> Melissa Gatto TK. Uh, TKO jugs jab, I believe, is, is what the <laughs> punch is called. <laughs> Over Tamiris Vidal, I, I was struggling <laughs> to find words that, that would rhyme with P, like what P J O J jugs. That'll work. Uh, it says punch the body politely on uh <laughs> Wikipedia. She punched her in the boob and a couple multiple times, actually. Uh, Vidal seemed to want to like followed up with one, <laughs> yeah. She wanted like earlier in the fight, she seemed to like uh hit her in the chest, and Vidal was like trying to uh stop the fight then, and then yeah. She got punched in the chest, uh, did not like it, uh, and um, she followed it up, and then the ref stepped in. So three, 37 seconds into the third round. This was no fluke. Logata was dominating the fight on the ground, and she just happened to win with the chest punch. So I'm going to give you two options here. Do you think – actually, I'll give you three options. Do you think, A, that punch hurt her enough to uh, end the fight? That's option A. Option B is – she was looking for a way out because she had been getting yeah, yeah. Beat so badly. Yeah. Option C, she thinks that that's a foul. Actually, that's the one I was going to say. Yes, because <laughs> she, she looked at the ref. She, yeah, she looked like she was the calling a timeout. Yeah, she, she did the same thing earlier in the fight. It seemed when they were up against the cage, uh, she did something with her her chest like as well. Can, so yeah, I think she thinks it was. She it can was punch a, uh, you there as much as yeah, she wants. Exactly. But now, you gotta look, a, gotta look good though. So, is this gonna be like, uh, like when when Conor McGregor hit Cerrone yep. with the the shoulders, and now yep. everybody's trying it? Cav kicks, <laughs> yep, yep. Jabs to the chest is gonna be the the new cool thing. But yeah, gotta look good. I, I still, yeah, probably would prefer her at flyweight. Like, look like she had some extra weight, not not uh, of the helpful kind. So I'm I'm sure you know she she can still comfortably drop down to to flyweight. Yeah, I, I think this was one of those opportunities where they offered her a short notice fight at Bantamweight, and she was like, oh, hey, she sucks. This would be a really great way for <laughs> yeah. me to pick up a win bonus and uh, maybe renew my contract or something like that. Yep. Speaking of sucking, uh, middleweights, Abbas Magomedov took care of Warley Alves, 30-26, 30-26, 30-26. By that score you would think oh magomedov looked like a killer uh, i wasn't really impressed with him at least at the starting he, he had himself in far too much danger against a fighter like wally alves eventually he got his grappling going and devastating ground and pound but yeah he i didn't like the shots he was eating to start the fight off yeah you anticipated my question is <laughs> abus at, is abus magomedov good at fighting no we don't know yet he's, okay, no he's good at grappling i guess but dude he has fought the wildest discrepancy in fighters mm -hmm. so far. He has fought Sean Strickland. He yep. has fought Kai Bohayo. Th those are two, you know, it depends on where you rank Kai Bohayo, but probably two top 10 middleweights right now. Yep. And he's fought Dustin Stoltzfus and Warley Alves coming up a division. Like that mm -hmm. is... I mean, he is somewhere between the top 10 and uh, number 78 in the yes. middleweight division, somewhere between 10 and 78. And I couldn't tell you if it was 11 or 77. It was booked all in the wrong order. He should have fought Alves. And then if you won that, and then Stolfis, if you wins that, then Pohio, if you won that, then a Strickland. Instead, it was all over the place. So Yeah. Well, I mean, there probably should have been four rungs in between Stolfus <laughs> yep. and, and Pohio too. Those two are yes, not course, close. Yep. <laughs> no. And yeah, we have Mike Madoff minus two seventy five. Still, uh, he's still on fraud alert, Gumby. Or people always want to put people on fraud alert. He's on fraud alert. Yeah. Um, Pierre Rodriguez really made me angry here. Women's star <laughs> a fight she was dominating. I, I forgot how much of a Hulk uh, Ariane Carnelosi is, but regardless, uh, Rodriguez was winning the fight. Uh, she had in second round. She had Carnelosi on the ground. She headbutted her. She was warned, and immediately she headbutted her again. Um, Car whether Carnelosi played it up or not, it's not the point. Is this was bad fight IQ? You lost the fight on your own, uh, Rodriguez. She's complaining today about uh, Carnelosi faking everything, but you're dumb enough to do a foul right after you're told not to do it. Uh, so you lose, and we lost as well because we had her picked to win the fight. So two things. First of all, I think the first 
time where she got warned for a headbutt. I was like, that that's probably not warranted. She dropped her head quick, but then she yeah. was grinding into her head, which is yeah. like a grappling technique. Like you do that when you're doing jujitsu well. But then she proved me wrong by immediately dropping a real <laughs> headbutt, which is yeah. like the second one was for sure. <laughs> for sure a headbutt. Now the other thing I'm going to say is I'm going to go to bat for Ariane Carnalosi here a little bit. I don't think she was faking how hurt she was. However, <laughs> I don't think it was from the headbutt. I think no. it was from the shot on the feet. Yep, she was and, hurt going into that. Yep. And then she got headbutted, and they were like, how are you feeling? The answer is not good. She almost got knocked out with a right hand shortly there before. So when you ask her how she's doing, she's not lying by saying she's not doing good. She's not there also to calculate how much of that is by the headbutt and yeah. how much of that is by the right hand. Like the, they just asked her how she was feeling. She was feeling bad. She had just been punched really hard in the head a couple of times and then headbutted once too. Like yep. she, she, who would answer that question bad, but it's not from the foul. You know, like that's, yes. that's, I'm not, I'm not putting that on her at all. I think she yeah. probably wasn't ready to finish the fight. Uh, like based on how hurt she was, but again, do I think it was because of the foul? Probably not. And it's the there's got to be a better way than asking a person who has fouled. Uh, do you do you want to quit and win the fight, or do you want to stay <laughs> in the fight and continue getting beat up and lose? Like, there's got to be a better. You can't leave it up to the, the only person who one lost, who you? answers that question. I want to get beat up and lose is Anthony Smith. <laughs> yeah, he's the only one I've ever seen say, "Please continue to beat me up for two more rounds and take my win away." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's. I don't know if there's a. There's got to be a better way to do it than that. But the sport's still young. We got to remember, <laughs> there's still some weird things that go on here. Seems a very strange, strange thing. Of course, she's going to say, "Okay, I, I'm done." Um, especially, you know, it's not like it, it's not on not on her to to forgive uh, Rodriguez for doing stupid fouls in the fight. Um, all right, uh, bantamweights. Ella Tang Hale took care of Cleetson Rodriguez like we hoped and expected. 30, 27, 30, 27, 29, 28. We had uh, Alatang at plus 135, a big underdog. He didn't really look like underdog in there. On the feet, Rodriguez obviously was better, but uh, Alatang had the grappling in his back pocket. Yeah, I, I, the, I, this one's just like we drew up, although I think I did say on Wednesday's episode that I thought Alatang might be a little sharper on the feet than Cledson because Cledson just lets it fly, right? Like that's really clear about how he runs things. Um, but yeah, highly Alatang, uh, low key good grappler. Uh, and uh, this fight also in our breakdown on Wednesday gave our friend Fred, uh, ooh, Fred, <laughs> friend, Fred, our friend. Ooh, that, why is that a hard word suddenly? Chad, uh, who's still hanging out on Twitter, although he's not necessarily hanging out in the Discord all the time. But Chad said that his new favorite fight breakdown uh, phrase of all time happened when we were talking about this fight, which is when I said that he knocked out Shannon Ross, but then again, a stiff fart would. Oh, uh, uh, yes. You yeah, like that? Yeah, he liked that. He said that it was his yeah. new favorite fight breakdown of all time and something he's going to use. <laughs> well, now now he's going to wake up his wife and tell her that you talked to uh, He, he was <laughs> going to wake him. up his wife, I think. I think he was the one. Yeah, he was the um, one who used to wake up his yeah. wife to tell. Hey, they yeah. dedicated an episode to yeah. Hey, uh, Chad, and, we still love you. Yeah. And, and for people who are not watching on YouTube, Gummy had a stroke while he was doing that breakdown. That's why <laughs> he kind of melted down and said, Chad's Chad, Chad's Chad. But he's back. Fred, Don't worry, I think I back. called him Fred, didn't Fred. I? He was a it's not just me. <laughs> it's not just me who uh, has trouble speaking on these here things. Um, all right. Uh, but actually, before before we we talk about the fight of the night for us, let's tell you about Rhythm, a new sponsor. Rhythm. It's not spelled like Rhythm. R I T H M M. If you're betting on NBA player props, then you need to download Rhythm. Rhythm gives you a menu of the best player props for every single NBA playoff game, making it easy to go through and find the best props to put your money on in seconds. Rhythm's predictions are backed by over three years of data and a team of data scientists and quants that focus on fine-tuning our algorithm to give you the best shot at winning. Rhythm pairs its predictions with player prop graphs to help feel even help you feel even more confident in your picks, which you can make wherever you normally place your bets or DFS picks. From superstars to bench players, Rhythm finds the best player prop lines, all backed by AI data, without you needing to endlessly scroll a sports book. Rhythm also allows you to create your own custom NBA models so you can get AI-backed money line spread and total picks for every playoff game. Start a free seven-day trial and start winning your NBA player props with Rhythm, available wherever you get your apps. It's R-I-T-H-M-M. -M. Obviously, that's how else would you spell Rhythm, right? Of course. Um, all right, the fight of the night, it, 
the night started off fantastically for us because I talked you into this one, by the way. I was already it's ready true, to, you did. to take advantage of talking you into this one. Yeah, it's true. Um, uh, I was hating to pick against Vanessa Novopoulos. I think I'm going to maybe realize why should I, why should I pay a premium and no pick against her? Vanessa Novopoulos uh, is not only uh, lovely and entertaining, but uh, she's got that dog in her, as I wrote in a bunch of my write ups, uh, my previous first event. And She's a dog in the, at the book. Plus 275, one of her biggest hits as of late. Took care of Emily Ducote. 28, 29, 29, 28, 29, I see we're in the minority. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you think Vanessa Demopoulos won. Maybe you don't think so. Seems the majority of people out there think uh, Ducote won. I thought Demopoulos won the fight, but maybe I'm biased. I So here's my thought on that one. And so I'm assuming you're looking at MMA decisions and yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't. So, uh, I, but I'll just say this. I think if media members were saying that Ducati won that fight, I'm guessing they just listened to the broadcast too much because the broadcast kept talking about how Demopolis wasn't landing the same punches as Ducati wasn't. And I don't think that's right. Like I, I, yeah, I think, no, she was landing good. And, and when she you was watch good shots, and if you look at the numbers, the numbers were close. And I'm not a numbers guy when it comes to the, the amount of punches. But also, like, I don't know that Ducati's strikes were more impactful than, than Demopolis. Like, Demopolis, Demopolis is a bleeder, and she was not bleeding. <laughs> so there yeah, you go. Yeah, and, and Ducati was. Yeah. You know, Ducati was bleeding out of her nose and her eye. Like, she, she had two different spots that were bleeding. Clearly, Demopolis was landing big. She was landing with kicks. I, I think anytime she threw that, that rear right hand, like, it looked like it landed hard. Um, and twice she wobbled Ducati. Like, I, I don't know how she wobbles somebody in two rounds and you think to yourself, clearly the person who got wobbled twice won and the one who didn't get wobbled at all lost. The you know what round, I mean? Yeah, the only round our friend Sal D'Amato didn't give Demopolis was when she split her open with the elbow in round two. So go figure, right? Wait, she Sal gave, D she, gave her one in three? <laughs> yeah, and not round two where, where she did the most damage. Okay, well, now Ducati betters have a, com a real complaint because that's, <laughs> I mean, Sal D's dumb. I'm just, yeah. there's nothing. Anyhow, uh, as for the media that. members, uh, out of 15, 13 picked Ducati. Who so, are the two uh, who didn't? Uh, Ryan Frederick, Wrestling Observer, and He's, MMA Uncensored. I don't know who the hell MMA Uncensored yeah. is, but Ryan Frederick's yeah. usually terrible. So now I kind of feel bad about being on that side. <laughs> no, I, I I thought you it doesn't matter what we think, Gumby. We won. All right. That's yeah. all that matters. And when it's plus 330, exactly. you just take that. <laughs> yeah, we, we take it. So it was a good night for us. As I said, I went nine to three. I hit a plus 275, plus 135 dogs. So I was up 409 bucks. Gumby eight and four. He had both the same dogs as I hit. And he uh, was up 235 bucks on the year. I'm almost breaking even. Uh 107 bucks. I'm down. I'm hitting 61%. Got me 54%. He's down 2,200, but there's still lots of time. Yeah. Gummy did beat, he did beat me in our fancy place. He had Hill. We both had Hill as our lock. He had Alatang Haley as his dog that hit. I had Barboza that definitely did not hit. Hill via decision I had that didn't hit sadly. And Mega Madoff via knockout. It came close uh, with the ground and pound, but that didn't did hit. It, as well. did, did anything he did <laughs> come close? He could have. He could if he tried. He could have um, done a lot of things. Yeah. And then the Hungry Man Jong didn't hit. Uh, Murphy, Barboza, Fight of the Night, Chaos Williams, Angie, Overkill Hill, Performance of the Night bonuses. No UFC next week. So you're probably thinking, oh, so the guys are going to take some time off, right? Much needed time off? No, we're not. We are not. We don't stop no matter what. Um, we'll tell you what's coming down the pipe, actually, for UFC. June 1st, UFC 302, Makashev versus Apoye in the Prudential Center, Newark, New Jersey. Um I'll go through the card quickly. Makshev Poye for the lightweight championship. Sean Strickland, Paulo Costa, if he shows up. Kevin Holland, Michael Oldestechuk, Jilton Almeida, Alexander Romanov, Randy Brown, Elizu Zaleski Dos Santos. That's the part they want you to pay for. Uh, prelims, Cesar Almeida, Roman Kapalov, Grant Dawson, Joe Selecki, Philip Rowe, Jake Matthews, Nico Price, Alex Morono. Oh, they're fighting each other. Spider-Man meme. Uh, oh, we, early... we literally mentioned both of them yeah, exactly. earlier about being the same person. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not really, I don't know. They, I just, it's not like they really fight like each other, but they're similar. They're, just, they're just number, somewhere between yeah. number 18 and 24 yeah, in that It's division. true. Yep. Then the early prelims, Mickey Gall is back, baby, versus Basil Hafiz. Eileen Perez, the greatest featherweight. Two by featherweight's gone now versus Jocelyn Edwards. I, do I have to say the next name? Uh, 
Naya Jargal to men. Narangigal to Dembembro. To Dembembro. I think I've, I've said his name before versus Andre. Yeah, he's an LFA guy. Yeah, this is a this is one of their B level uh, pay per views. This isn't one of their their top shelf ones. We we just had a top shelf one though. To be fair, mm-hmm. uh, not that one. It's, it's not it's not C level. You know, it, it's not it's not. Yeah, the Brazil I, one I, I'd say this is a good one too. A lot of fun undercard fights on there. I, I actually think the main card is kind of awesome. Like I, at that Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa fight, Very they're both they're both terribly annoying on social yeah. media. Uh, although I know people really love Paulo Costa's. At least Costa's league. funny sometimes. Strickland's not it's, really funny ever. Paulo Costa's really not for me. I don't think. And, no. and I don't mean that in like a I'm offended by him kind of way. I just like everybody's like, oh, secret juice memes, and I'm like, I don't yeah, know yeah, why yeah. this. I don't know why this is funny. Uh, <laughs> it's I feel really old when people laugh at him. Uh, yeah. And, and so, like, I I don't love both of those guys. But that's a fun as hell, hell fight. Um, I'm excited to see Kevin Holland in that spot. I actually think uh, the last fight of the prelims, the Roman Kopilov versus Caesar Almeida one, is weird and wonderful. Um, do you know how good Randy Brown has been recently? Oh yeah, he's he's been very good. Rude Boy has been very good, and now he's main card in pay per views. So there Dude, you go. He he has won. Is it six of seven? With the only loss being uh, Jack Della Maddalena. Yeah, like, this I, should I'm, be a f- I'm pretty sure it's six of seven. One, two, six out of seven. Yeah, he's won two straight, lost to Jack, and then he had won four straight before that. So, yeah. How is he not in the, like, how is he not fighting a ranked dude? dude? It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, this is another I, winning, another fight for the easy, not an easy win, another winnable fight for him. Yeah, for sure. Um, yep. But anyway. Uh, yeah, he's won six out of seven, which is crazy. Um, so I think this is kind of a sleeper. It's a good, a good fight card. It's it's in two weeks though. So we're just going to chill for the next couple of weeks. Don't have to worry about it. Okay. Negative. Let's, Negative. let's break down four regional cards. Cause let's I rock break down at four. It. All right. This week we got you covered. All right. We got it all figured out. We got regional events, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week, boy, next week's going to be even harder. Gummy <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, there's, there's events next week. You found I'll, events next I'll, week. I'll find stuff. I think have KSW, you looked at the calendar, K- Gumby? KSW's next week. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't see that. Yeah, we skipped. K- yeah, of course you didn't. You missed it last week. I, didn't, I missed it last time. My my loss. We got all kinds true. of shit for it. I like KSW too, so that's not <laughs> something I should uh, be skipping over. All right, let's skip on out of here. Speaking of skipping, uh, thank you for coming to the show. We'll be back in your ears tomorrow, and your and your eye holes tomorrow, the next day, and so on and so on. Uh, we can be found at in their Discord, sportsgamblogist.com slash Discord. I was not, I was absent last night. I'm absent often on fight nights because I, I don't get to watch many of them live. Uh, were you in there, Gumby? Was it jumping like usual? I was in there a little bit. I had spent a lot of time in during Road to the UFC, and then it was my kid's yeah. birthday party. So uh, I, I spent a little less time in there than usual. Yeah. But it self-regulates now. Mom and dad don't, don't have to be in there. Um, so get in the Discord. Uh, if you're into the Twitter thing, SGP and MMA, Gumby runs that very nicely for us. Uh, he's at Gumby Vreeland. I'm a Jeff Fox writer there, and I'm same on Instagram. You can get in my sub stack, enter my weekly UFC pick'em contest. Uh, so I won't be running one this week, but next week I will be. Oh, that reminds me. I got to figure out who won this past weekend's later on um so get in there money mma.substack.com gummy's got top turtle mma podcast it's no longer cursed fighters you can go on there and, and win your fight still and not have get hit by a pickup truck the night before so that would be top turtle make sure you listen to that uh, and of course uh youtube thank you our subscriber numbers uh, views all that continues to go up i appreciate we do both appreciate it uh get in there subscribe all that good stuff and of course uh, sportsgamblepodcast.com is the mother base the home ship all that good stuff for us um sportsgamingpodcast.com slash store sportsgamingpodcast.com slash patreon they're, they're the uh, stuff you have to have plugged into your into your um computer thingamajig into your phone more than likely all right we'll be back tomorrow i'll be gordina jeff fox the mongolian night gumby Vreeland, and we'll talk to you then